This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, it's age with grace. Uh, aging with without, grace. Without borders. With, without, well, no, but the, that's the name of the show. This is Colin Hayashida. He's helped me do this. <laughs> he's a gerontology consultant, and he's been a gerontology consultant for as long as I know him, which is actually quite some time already. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's uh, Age with, with Grace, Aging with Grace, but the name of the show today we're going to talk about is Age Without Borders, uh, because that's a virtual summit we're going to talk about with Colin. That's right. Welcome to the show, Colin. Thank you very much. I always <laughs> appreciate it, you know, a chance to talk to you. It's an important subject, and I always like talking to you. So um, you know, first, let's identify this uh, virtual summit, Age Without Borders. What is that, and who does it serve, and how does it work? Well, the Age Without Borders uh, <clears throat> uh, initiative uh, it was uh, um, developed uh, about over a, a year ago, uh, and it has had one conference uh, thus far, but it's a, it's a virtual summit. Uh, what this means is that uh, the organization <coughs> put together um, for this particular one conference that will be at the end of this month, about 60 international speakers from around the world, 17 countries, each of which, each of whom are given about you know, half an hour to talk about their specific skills and, and, and knowledge. And, um, and so it's, it's, it's like going to a conference, but it's, uh, it's free uh, and it's, it's much cheaper than going to a conference, you know, which will set you back about $2,000. Yeah, wow. right. And the travel. And, and the travel and the time involved, yeah, yeah. yes. So this is a great opportunity to, to learn uh, both for professionals as well as for unpaid family members, skills and inf insights uh, so that they can do their be uh, their job better. Yeah. So um, how is it broken down? I want to learn something. I go on the website, which is www.awbcaregiving.com. Correct. Uh, how do I find stuff out on that website? Good question. Well, AWB stands for Age Without Borders. So it's www.awbcaregiving.com. And when you go to that website, um, you will be um, um, able to identify a, a particular link which will say you can, you can click here and have free access to this, uh, all of these 60 speakers during the week from January 20 to the 26 um, at no cost. So, and they so could be anywhere. It, you can be anywhere in the, in the world, world, right, okay. in the world, right. Um, now, if you want to retain uh, some of these great, uh, you know, uh, presentations, then there's a cost associated. But for that week, it's free. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's like you're live almost. You're, you're there, you're there for the week. Yeah. If you yeah. want to come back, that may cost you something, but being there for the week doesn't cost anything. Absolutely. And you know, when you go to a conference, it's impossible to go and listen to 60 speakers. That's true. Right? And here, you, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it'll take you about 48 hours to listen to it all, you know. <laughs> so uh, you, you got to set some time aside for so yourself to do this. some examples then of what the speakers are speaking about? My goodness, there's, um, there's such a, a wide array. Uh, there, there's some people that are talking about broad issues. Um, some of them are dealing with technology and how technology can help because today uh, we have so many <clears throat> um, people that need help and we have uh, fewer and fewer uh, healthcare workers. And um, when especially and gerontology, geronto healthcare gerontology health care, absolutely. And so um, when when um, family members have to go out to work, you know, mom and dad, whom you care for, is is home alone, and that becomes a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so there's some technologies that are available. Um, and then there's some there's some personal stories about people who have gone through the process and some of the lessons that they have learned. Um, there's others that have shared very specific um, skill tools that uh, are available. So there's a whole variety of things. One of the things about this particular virtual summit is that in addition to the 60 individuals who are speaking, and that includes myself, by the way. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. um, there's also something called a care package of various kinds of tools and, and um, other kinds of resources, even some music and poetry and other sorts of um, useful um, tools that one can use and, and, and uh, retain. So that's also 
free mm -hmm. during that particular mm -hmm. week as well. So this is a whole primer on everything you need to know. Absolutely. Now, when, when does it start? Is it online now? Is, when no, is it happening? It starts from January 20th, which is at the end of the oh, month. Oh, oh it's yeah, a few days away. Yeah, just a few days away. And so it, it'll be a great opportunity for people to have access to this. And it's, it's available worldwide. Okay, and it's going to repeat. It's not just a one time only, huh? Um, <clears throat> During that week, um, each show will be available uh, for about 48 hours uh, because, of course, you know, the world is, uh, is a big place. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, so you... Uh, and your so market is the world. And the market is the world. To everyone. Everywhere. Everyone in the world, yes. And so um, day one will be shown for 48 hours. Day two will be shown. So there's going to be a certain amount of an overlap, mm -hmm. but uh, that, that'll start from January. But will you do 20th. this again? Will you have another online conference along these lines, say in a year or six months, whatever? That's a possibility. Um, that will be something that will be too determined. They had one last year that I also participated in, and we focused specifically on this term called active aging targeting the, the boomer population and the pre-retirees to remain well, to live long, you know, until their last breath, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I love the idea. What, so what's, give us a definition of active aging and give, give us the years on boomers. What, what generation, how do you define that generation? That's a tough question. <laughs> but we're, you know, <clears throat> um, we're looking at uh, people from, let's say, let's say about 50 to about 75 and maybe 80 that are are, are um, pre-retirees or thinking about retiring uh, some that are early retirees and are still very active but oftentimes um, <clears throat> people that certainly want to live long and they want to live well um, but oftentimes are not really clear with regards to how to do that and so when we look at pre-retirement seminars, oftentimes it's about your, you know, Medicare and your Social Security benefit. Um, and others will talk about how important, you know, remaining physically active is. But active aging is more than just your health or your finances. There are 11 facets that are involved, you know. We have to, we have to watch our, our physical fitness and our social fitness, our medical fitness, our nutritional fitness, you know, our financial fitness. And we have to also watch our, 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 our purpose, you know, in terms of trying to clarify what it is that um, we want to do with the rest of our life. Who are you? Yeah. Now that you are retired yeah, and without is, a job a life title. life and death decision. Absolutely. And you get older like that, you're facing, you know, the grim reaper. You have to decide yeah. what you want to do with your remaining we, time on the planet. Absolutely. And what good can you provide? You know, how can you remain useful? Ah, that's a very interesting question. Because if you remain useful, by definition, you remain connected. If you remain connected, you know, your life is better. Your sense of awareness You're is using better. your brain. Using too. your brain. If you right. use your brain... Your brain will last longer. I absolutely, like clear absolutely, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is all part of what we call active aging. You know, it's a very, it's a very. Uh, what's, what's the connection? Give us a little bio of yourself. I know you were in KCC for a long time. Yes, uh, doing yeah. aging issues. Right, um, right. And then uh, <coughs> you've been involved in the conversion, if you will, of of St. Francis in Valiha into an aging facility. Talk about it. Well, yes, uh, so I, I am still a consultant with St. Francis, uh, which was once a hospital um, that now has decided that they wanted to convert the entire fa facility into a Kupuna village, you know, an elder care village that uh, dedicates itself to elder care services from institutional care to community-based care to uh, active aging exercise and wellness type of um, um, programs when you as say well. Institutional, you mean people live there? Like Nursing it? homes, yeah. yeah okay. And then um, uh, uh, St. Francis is also in the process of setting up a an assisted living facility mm -hmm. that people that are frail but still independent. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's going to create an entire array of different types of services there, and. Um, and, and there's this dedication towards elder care. Yeah. My job there is to focus around training, uh, around family caregiver training as well as the active the aging. Professional area. staff training. Um, not so much for unpaid caregivers. Unpaid that, care volunteers. Yes. That's right. That's oh, right. Oh, that's wonderful. That gives Pe you connection, doesn't it? That's right. So we're, we're looking, there, there, there are growing numbers of older adults. 
which means that there are going, growing numbers of family members that are caring for mom and moms and dads and an aunties and uncles as well, you know. And this becomes um, a, a major challenge because these are also people that are working. And so to the extent that you need to do this type of work, it pulls people away from work, you know, their, their jobs and it can uh, have an effect on productivity sure. as well. So, so these are concerns that we all have life, to be concerned yeah. with, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, this is, I mean, it's really interesting because um, what it suggests is that you don't just sit there like in the old days and and the zone on the TV. Right. Uh, you want to have a quality of life. You you have to do some things. I remember uh, my stepmother lived in New Jersey, and they had a uh, an elder facility in the neighborhood, and they would go into Manhattan. They would go on these trips. Everybody get on the bus. They would do very exciting, interesting things. Together, and it yes. was, together was the magic word. Right, right, right. And, you know, if, if you do it together, you're, you're not isolated and you're not Absolutely. worried. You know, somebody will take care of you. Yes, yes, And uh, yes. you can, you know, bounce your ideas off people and, yes. and have a collective experience, you know. Right, right, right. So we, we want to keep people in. You know, isolation is very corrosive. You know, it's as someone had once said to me that, um, um, being isolated is almost like smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, you know, <laughs> in terms of the, it's, it's negative effect on your health, you yeah, know. Yeah. So we got to stay connected. If, if your, your loved ones pass away, you've got to reconnect. You've got to reconnect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's very important. And, and you need an institution to do that. It's hard, hard to do it yourself. Right, right, and, right. You need to meet new people and right. actually engage yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's take a short break, Colin. Colin, okay. hi, Yoshida. Uh, Colin is a, uh, an gerontology consultant, having worked at KCC in a teaching role and uh, also uh, consulting with uh, St. Francis, which is, um, mm, what do I want to say, um, uh, evolving, evolving into a, a full service uh, elder care facility. That's correct. And we're talking today about Age Without uh, Borders, um, which is a virtual summit. And when we come back, I'd like to talk about you know, how it is in Hawaii. You know, what, 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 what's the situation right now and how are we going to, you know, make it better for all of us, including you and me, uh, when we get into that special zone? We'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Mm -hmm. Work is it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're back. We're live with Colin Hayashida, and he is a gerontology consultant. That means old age consultant. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's been he's been a gerontology consultant since he was a young man. <laughs> what brought you into it anyway? Why did you get so committed to this this whole area? Well, that's uh, that's a long story. <laughs> well, I something, I something to do with family. Right? It has to do with family. Yeah. Well, you know, we were living in uh, Cleveland, uh, and I was uh, a professor there, teaching. Uh, 18th century, 19th century Japanese Chinese society. Can you believe that? <laughs> and then uh, river caught on fire. My daughter got um, all sorts of uh, health related problems. Uh, and so we decided, you know, this is not working out. So let's come back to Hawaii. Kuokini decided to pick me up <clears throat> um, without any background in the field. And they said, we'll train you. We'll train you. This was back in 1978. And they, they, they provided me with uh, a, lot, a, of, a lot of support. We found you liked it a lot. Yes, yes. So, so that was the beginning back in 78 when, you know, gerontology really was not of much uh, interest to uh, much pe many people around. Yeah. But then uh, over 10 years, I, 
I was able to acquire some knowledge base and you know over time we um, I, I was involved with many people on this but uh, got involved with uh, creating about 50 different initiatives in Hawaii having to do with elder care all directed towards finding um, you know more cost-effective home and community ba based type services yeah yeah well yeah and, and the discussion of those initiatives uh, will help us understand what the problems are right so first let's talk about the problems mm -hmm. I mean I remember years ago my wife and I uh, was courting her we went to Kauai where she was from and we found that down down in a kind of ditch um, under uh, between Kaloa and the road there was a, a, a whole string of these um, plantation looking houses little tiny houses with with steel roofs and you know green uh, walls uh, and um, and that's where the elder population lived and everybody would come down and give them soup all the time and they were part of larger family the community in Kaloa I was so impressed with that everybody cared um, I don't think it works that way anymore people don't do that for other people they, they uh, you know if you get old you have to find some system that will accept you right. so is it easy is it hard now Yes, you know, I, I, I think your point is well taken that there's a certain amount of loss of community, you know. People helping people, which was so much a part of that, you know, plantation life, um, that we need to somehow find ways of reconstructing to a certain extent. You know, we take condominiums, for example. We've got so many people living in, in, in a very small confine, and yet people don't know each other and don't want to know each other, and there's no community. But I think there are opportunities there in trying to create community. And this is important because in Hawaii, we've got, I don't know, thousands of these condos. And, and many of them were built in, let's say, in the uh, 1960s by 40-year-olds who are today you know, in their 80s. And so we found certain condos that are like 40%, 50% over 65, right? So these are like aging in place, communities in a sense yeah. and we've got to find ways of f recreating this people helping people type environment you know and, and there there are possibilities city and county of honolulu uh through mayor caldwell and the arp have worked on something called uh, the age friendly city initiative and this is from the a who um, and <clears throat> hmsa has worked from the other angle and they've they've worked with um the um None, what is was it called a National Geographic magazine? Mm -hmm. um, they've they've created uh, this uh, program called uh, the Blue Zone, and what what had happened was uh, the National Geographic community went to various parts of the world and they found certain areas where people are living, um, where there's a lot of centenarians there, and they 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 tried to identify some of the secrets for long life. And they brought this together in um, nine principles called the Blue Zone. And so HMSA now is trying to work with certain communities in Hawaii to um, recreate some of those types of principles and, 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 and build communities. So these are all good things. We've got a lot of work to do in this yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the idea is everybody, you know, from, I mean, HMSA directed by, you know, profit. Yes. Um, but HMSA wants people to be in community so they're healthier right and therefore that you know they don't get sick and not institutional but they'll get it's like the deacon's chariot remember the story of the deacon's chariot the deacon built a chariot that would last a hundred years okay and everything on it was going to last a hundred years and it lasted a hundred years and on his hundredth birthday everything fell off and it was completely collapsed and maybe that's the way to go that's right, right. That's you right. may you make that chariot last as long as you can and at a certain point you know it's gonna the wheels are gonna come off, <laughs> but at least it's a short it's a short moment at the end. You know? That's right. That's right. Well, th that's uh, related to that book that I made re reference to by Roger Landry. Yeah. You know, live long, die short. You yeah. Know? We want to be able to live a long life in in um, good health until our natural lifespan and a short death. We don't want a long death. You know, uh, you know, in in an institutional facility, there's not not that much quality yeah, related yeah, to yeah. that, right? So what work has to be done and what work are you doing in these initiatives you mentioned earlier? Well, <clears throat> on the caregiving side, uh, I'm, I'm part of um, a, a local organization, a nonprofit called Hawaii Family Caregiver um, Initiative, a program, consortium. 
And uh, it, uh, we, we have been trying to advocate for things having to do with caregivers. For example, at the legislature, uh, a couple years ago, ARP had uh, started an initiative called the CARE Act where they wanted to try to promote um, hospitals, uh, encourage the hospitals to provide instructions to family caregivers before their discharge into the community. Great idea. Great idea. And that passed um, a couple years ago, so, so that's in place right now. How do you incentivize that? How do you make that happen? You know, there's no, there's no penalty associated with not doing it. Um, there, what, uh, what is happening is that uh, hospitals are just putting together some, some instructional sheets that they're providing the, the families with. And so it's, it's more through encouragement rather than through, yeah. you know, a hammer, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, and it's, just, it's the same thing as the HMSA thing. They're motivated to do that because they'll, you know, that everybody's healthier. Right, right, right. And the other thing, well, one of the other things that we've been uh, assisting with was um, the need to look at family caregivers who are working, uh, and there's so many of them around, right? Yeah. And, and so a couple of years ago, a bill passed a legislature to provide some financial assistance to these family, working family caregivers. Um, and right now it's, it's, it's being implemented, but the amount of money is small. So during this coming legislative session, there's a, there's a bill that's going to be introduced to expand that by maybe by sixfold. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, when you go down and, and testify on that, I assume you will. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the big question is to demonstrate to them that the, 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 the bell curve is going out. Yep. And there are more people, and there, you know, there is a greater need because on the one hand, you need to help the, uh, the Kapuna, and on the other hand, you have to help the young family who's, who is be, whose lives are, are being thrown out of kilter because they need to help their old Right, folks. right. Um, and, and then at the same time, um, you know, it seems to me that this is a, there's a community here, mm -hmm. and from a political point of view, the Kupuna community, ooh, Kupuna community, KK, <laughs> okay? Leave out another K, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a third K. <laughs> that community could be, uh, maybe to some extent already is, a powerful political force, and the legislature cannot ignore them. Yet. Oh, absolutely. Older adults, they vote in yeah, great exactly. numbers exactly. and in yeah. high percentages. And the legislators, they know that. Yeah, they know yeah, that, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it, it, it's not just the kupunas that we're caring for, it's the families. They're the ones that are immediately affected. And more and more, we're finding that the legislators are making reference to their family members. So they are beginning to get it, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Well, anything else, anything else cooking or should be cooked, anything you're planning in the future? Well, we're beginning to, uh, I, you know, the, the, the focus, much of my work has been around dealing with frailty, you know, older adults, you know, from a frailty as well as a disabled perspective that is aging as sick care. And what I've done uh, recently is I begin to pivot towards looking at older adults as an asset to the cr community, that, that we should not simply you know, give people a gold watch and say, you know, you're out to the pastors, but recognize that older people have skills, they've got assets, they've got, they got knowledge, they've got experience, and they've got a lot of time on their hands. Um, so we've got to find a way of somehow making certain that they remain useful and contributing to the community because that's going to make them well and perhaps even have a moderating effect in terms of the, no, the need for long-term care. Sure. So that's something that we want to work on. Now part of this is that <clears throat> um, the, the boomers now and the older adults that are, are, are around right now probably have pensions and we're going to see pensions go away. So a lot of the boomers that are coming up yeah, and the older adults in the, uh, in the near future and the ones that were working in the private sector do not have pensions. They've got 401ks that will not last that long. And so we have to find ways of um, making it possible for older adults to continue working. Some, they need to work because they're sh shorting cash. You know, because longevity is a great thing. It's a blessing. But if you run out of cash, it's a curse. So we've got to find ways in which we can somehow make certain that we can provide people with a clearinghouse to help them uh, find um, opportunities to continue yeah. to employment work. Employment agency. Uh, employment will. agency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and some of them do not have to work, but they, they want to 
do something, be useful, Stay you know. Engaged. And so yeah. th that is also an important part of uh, what we need to incorporate in yeah. this uh, clearinghouse. Yeah, as but well. I mean, what you were talking about, it does raise the dark side. And the dark yeah. side is that, um, that Donald Trump and his friends uh, will cut all kinds of social benefits, Absolutely, like Medicare, yeah. Medicaid, and <coughs> Social Security for that matter. I think Paul Ryan is, is looking oh, at these guys, cutting yeah. them all. They're yeah. really. So, I mean, I, I hope we can throw them all out of office. But in the meantime, if we don't, for any reason, uh, and they stay around, it seems clear to me that they're going to cut these benefits. You know, it was a two-step, you know, step transaction where the first thing you give a tax tax break to the corporations. The second step, almost immediately, said, "Oh, we have n we don't have enough money, money now. Yeah. We have to cut benefits." It's like one followed the other, and it had to be an intentional plan. So, so if that happens in Hawaii, anyway. And you have more people in a situation where their Social Security, whatever is left of it, you know, and Medicare and Medicaid doesn't really cover their expenses, uh, and there are more of them because the, the boomers, you know, go out on the, on the age curve. Um, what happens to us? The state government, what happens to us? Right. Who's going to take care of them? That's right. This is a big, huge, big problem. It's a huge problem, yeah. What do we do? Well, you know, this is, um, we have to realize that, you know, we are the ones that we've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> there's nobody else, you know. Yeah. And uh, there, there's some of us who have been in the field, and we, we, we just need to recognize that we, we've got an obligation to uh, and pass, pass on that knowledge and, and, and bring together a network to create the change, you know, the positive change. Because we have an obligation to the next generation. Yeah. We're the ones that we've been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the next generation would like to see us independent. Absolutely. The next generation does not want to see us become dependent. No, no. And, and for that matter, they don't want to be dependent either. No. Um, no. So we really have to make this a, a, working, a working body yeah. of the population. And if we can remain independent uh, you know, for as long as possible, until our last breath, it's a gift to the next generation. It is. Right? Now, but I'd like to pose a, a problem to you, though. Right now, the unemployment rate in the state of Hawaii is 2%. Correct. We're, we're less, you know, it's very fortunate, I suppose. Um, but if, if um, you know, the kupuna are looking for jobs, what happens? Well, this is, you know, many of these companies are not, not paying too much attention to the fact that our, our kupuna uh, are there, you know. And, and we don't necessarily make it that easy for them to navigate this whole process of job finding. Uh, and some of them may need certain skills, some coaching, say, need to do some resume writing, or uh, they, they, you know, and, and, and there's a whole variety of uh, different sorts of things that we can do to assist them to make that transition. And then, so we've got to look at this population, um, particularly at this time when we're so short on, on, on labor, um, a, as a huge resource a huge resource and and they come to work on time <laughs> you know they 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 they, um, they don't have girlfriend and bo boyfriend work ethic, right yeah. they don't have boyfriend girlfriend problems like that <laughs> <laughs> not usually anyway not usually anyway <laughs> well uh, you know part of this is that that generation has to see itself right as in as in this model as the working model working until you really really can't right and um, you know it's, it's not just that we Tell them that that it's a good idea from a, all kinds of points of view, but also that they, you know, integrate that into their thinking and right. that they're ready to come to work. They're yeah. ready to, you yeah. know, do the job, whatever it is, and please, right. please their employer and right. and uh, achieve things. Yeah, right, um, right. It's, it's a great thing for them, but we have to tell them and make them understand. You know, a lot that. of times <clears throat> employers think, well, you know, we're talking about an older person who may have some health problems, and this is going to create a lot of problems on my on my, you know, my overhead. But, you know, it is possible uh, to look at the older adults as people with Medicare. Uh, and, and it is possible to make arrangements for a population like this to, to, to perhaps waive, you know, some benefits in, in, in exchange for work. Um, and so there, there, there are things that we've got to look at collectively and, you know, and negotiate to see whether or not it's still it's possible. It's a beautiful idea, Colin. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you implement it? How do you, you know, here we are, it's uh, January 15, 2018. How mm -hmm. do you implement this and make it happen? I need to create a kitchen cabinet. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm looking for people uh, who understand the importance of, of this, uh, this, this cohort as a huge asset to our community. Uh, and then perhaps, you know, start with um, small projects uh, that are very uh, implementable and can lead to success. We may need to create some some um, excitement in the community by bringing some national and international leaders to talk about this and you know create more of a buzz. Um, uh, one of the things that is also possible I guess in creating this awareness is looking at look at our senior fairs today. It's all focused around you know this is a great nursing home or a great assisted living facility or great home health care agency. That's all sick care as I said. We don't have a companion active aging type summit or a festival that celebrates age as an asset and look at older adults looking for opportunities, paid or unpaid. Now, Japan has been doing this for about four or five years really? now. Good. I'm bringing a group of about 10 of us uh, in March to Japan to look at what they're doing and we wanna, we wanna bring that back to Hawaii. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a variety of things, but we've gotta, gotta keep moving forward. So how does this relate to the notion of aging in place? Those people in the condominiums you were talking about from the 60s who were still there. Yes. And who liked their condominiums, who right. were happy in their condominiums. Yes. Are, are you talking to them? Um, do you want, you suggest that they stay there and uh, do active aging from their condo, or should they consider going to, you know, a senior facility, an institutional senior facility? Well, everyone, you know, will have to make some decisions on their own, of course. Um, oftentimes, aging in place uh, seems like something that is what we want because we want to remain where we are. Uh, at some point in your life, you might find that um, it may, um, you know, let's say if, if it's not a condo, it's a single family house and you've got a big house which may be 2,000 square feet and you don't need all that space and then it, you know, it collects a lot of clutter and it, it becomes more trouble than it's worth. You know, yeah. we need to, we need to make those look at ourselves and yeah. make some decisions yeah. about downsizing, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so th those are questions that we need to, you know, learn about. We've got to ed ed educate ourselves about what's available in the community and what, what probably is best, you know. We may, we may need to do some things as far as housing is concerned for ourselves, but we can still go on and continue to be useful. Yeah, but yeah. one thing is clear, and it's not only Trump and his Republican friends who want to cut benefits. It's, it's medicine. It's our social fabric. It's state economics. Yeah. All these things are in play. All these things are changing. And so are attitudes around the kupuna. Right. So you're in the middle of that. You're doing, you're doing very important work. Well, you're helping me. <laughs> <laughs> and guess getting what? the word out. You know? We're both getting old together. Yes. So we can understand this better every day. Okay. <laughs> you watch my back. I'll watch yours. How's that? <laughs> Thank you, Colin. <laughs> Colin Hayashita, thanks so much for coming down. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you.